Ladies and gentlemen, after scripting history with the soft landing on the South Polar region by Chandrayaan 3, ISRO is all set with yet another ambitious project. This is to study the sun. If many of you are really wondering what are the objectives of this very mission, what is it that we are really going to achieve out of this mission, none other than Srijan in our studio to help you understand right from the trajectory of Aditya L1 to the payloads which are there and what are the main objectives. Let me quickly introduce Srijan. He's also the CEO of Homi Lab and the former advisor of uh, Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam. Srijan, thank you very much for joining us. Let's quickly begin by asking, you know, the first set of questions that we have with regards to the trajectory. We've already seen, ISRO has already declared that uh, it has already been inserted into Earth's orbit, which would be the step one, as I understand, as per the slide. So let's try and explain this to our viewers. What really happened? How is this journey of 125 days that we are really talking about, if you can take us through? Correct. So we have successfully launched Aditya L1 into the Earth's orbit. That has been done by our workhorse PSLV XL. Now, the distance from Earth to at your end is the Sun okay. is 15 crore kilometers. We have to not go 15 crore kilometers, we have to go only a distance of 15 lakh kilometers. So that's the L1. Right up to L1. Right. So only about 1% of the distance from the Earth to the Sun is what we need to cover. Right. Which is great because if you go too close to the Sun, everything burns up. Right. So let's begin where we were today. Today, yeah, what before we you do that, Shijan, just a quick uh, question because this is now the focus L1 that we've been talking about. Like as that. I understand, correct me wrong. As I understand, this is the very place where this spacecraft is literally parked yes. without uh, using much of a fuel and getting the best view of the sun. So. Am I correct? You are correct and also gravitationally it is okay. balanced. The sun is 300,000 times, 3 lakh times okay. heavier than earth. Which means if you want to balance the gravity of the earth which is pulling this side right. and the gravity of the sun which is pulling that side, okay. you have to be somewhere closer to the earth. Right. And in this case the L1 point is about 1% the distance from the sun to the earth. Okay. So 15 lakh kilometers for a distance of 15 crore kilometers. Okay. So that's where you park. The gravity works beautifully there. It is complicated because now unlike Chandrayaan or any other mission, it's not just a gravity of one planet you're concerned about. You are playing with the gravity of the mighty sun Okay. And you have to also worry about the gravity of Earth. So it's, it's a beautiful parking spot we have okay. created. There are five L points, L1 to L5. Lagrange 1 is where we are going. 24-7 observation on the sun. Let's come to here. This is where we are right okay. now. What we have achieved today is this. We have managed to establish our Aditya L1 into the Earth's orbit. Okay. This is the first orbit. Right, which will make of the Earth. It's a much shorter orbit. And we now know from the Chandrayaan mission what happens next is that we elevate this orbit. We use the thrusters not on board PSLV, that's gone now. Okay. We use thrusters on board this, Aditya L1, and we elevate the orbit. This will happen over the next few days, over four cycles. So the separation has already taken place. Separation is now PSLV has no role to play. No role. It's okay. only Aditya L1 now. Stage one, we will elevate the orbit to and the fourth time we do it, magic happens. Okay. Because now what happens, the orbit becomes really long, really elliptical. We are using thrusters on board L1 to do that. There are eight medium-sized thrusters available L1 uh, on board L1 okay. to do so. Then what happens? Then something which we have never done happens. We then go into this red line. This is to escape the sphere of influence of Earth's gravity. This is a new path to us. This is the first time we are taking towards the sun, escaping the Earth's gravity completely. The sphere of influence of Earth's gravity goes away. Now you can't do elliptical orbits. The Earth is not pulling you anymore. You are on your own and a different set of engines now work, which is a big challenge because those engines which worked here will not work here. Okay. And you have to start these new engines in an unknown territory of space. And this is the cruising phase. It's like cruise mode, okay. right? Cruise mode goes all up to about 15 lakh kilometers. The far, it's four times as far as we've gone with Chandrayaan. We go here, we now are at the L1 point. So uh, you say, you're saying that this would be the most challenging aspect of the journey? No, what happens now is the most challenging. Okay. This is the second most challenging part. Okay. This is the most challenging part. Now you switch on the third set of motors. They're small motors, four of them. They, and small because we, we, we have very limited fuel and energy to operate right. them. 
and we have to go around this for not a few days, not a few weeks, a few years. We okay. have to operate this at the L1 orbit, keep it balanced for about five years. And okay. that is the trajectory it will keep taking and will keep continuously looking at the sun and clicking photographs. So it's, it's not really stationary as such, it's, it's, it's no, making no. that... Uh, yeah, it, it will move, it will move a bit. Right. So it basically gives you an understanding. See, the Earth is also really moving, right? So right. everything is moving. So, it so has it's to not move. like what we are making it look like a parking spot. It's like at one stationary spot. It makes that much needed move. Okay. So that's the trajectory part that we've covered. Part. Okay. So this is how this will take four months. Okay. A little more than four months, and that will take five years for it okay. to go around. Who knows? Maybe even longer. It will okay. go around. We we best, uh, best wishes for that. Okay, right. Okay. So that's that that encompasses co completely all the experiments that it's supposed to be carrying out. Yes. So it, it's a, it's a it's a five year long period that we are really looking at in yes. terms of the experiments. Yes. Yes. All the experiments will take five years. Okay. We can now come to what uh, what are the components, which is the most exciting part. This is a scaled down model. Of course, okay. the so solar flaps. Why don't you and come this side yes. so that our viewers can get a better the, look? The, the solar flaps will eventually open up and okay. point towards the sun for energy and that energy will operate this entire system. Uh, this is your L1. It is not this small, it is about a meter tall. So it's much scaled down model from the, it will be about this big, about a meter uh, in height and in width and slightly less than a meter in terms of its depth. So this is a scaled down model, but I will use this to explain to you what are the components. Oh, bear in mind one thing, very interesting thing, which is that all, every single component, the payload, the seven payloads about Aditya L1 are made in India. And not just by one place. They're made in Ahmedabad by Vikram Sarabhai founded uh, physics research laboratory from that, from Trivendram, from Bangalore, and from Pune. So different places in India have got together, which shows how industrial might of India has gone up because That's of these the other. Let's look at this. The most fascinating piece is this, this yellow part. So this... This, this is at the top of the... At the yeah. top of this, this camera, this is like a camera. And uh, what it does is that it clicks photographs of the sun, continuously pointed at it. 1440 photographs of the sun on a daily basis is what it will click. It studies the corona of the sun. Okay, that's the, the outer sphere that we are... The, uh, the, yeah, the outer sphere. Everything is outer. We have photosphere. Photosphere is like the surface of the sun. Sun does not have a surface. Correct. But if you could imagine, uh, compare it with the earth, surface. the surface of the earth is like the surface of the sun, which is photosphere. As I understand, that's one aspect that uh, L1 yes. would be looking Yeah, at. absolutely. And then just above the photosphere is chromosphere, which is like the atmosphere of the sun. Okay. Strong winds of 1,000 kilometers per hour go at 5,000 Kelvin temperature. So that's 5, part degrees of centigrade. one of the experiments to understand Yeah, yeah, we'll understand wind. everything. Yes, and solar wind, I'll come to aspects. We'll come to that. And above that is corona. Now, the, the one thing, one mysterious thing about the sun is that while the photosphere is at a temperature of 5,500 degrees centigrade, the corona, which should have been cooler because it's, it's away from the core, is actually at 2 million degrees centigrade. So okay. how does this happen? We don't know. We have theories. We don't know. It's important because corona affects our own weather. And that's why we are trying to understand corona. So this will study the corona, take photographs of it, and also figure out what are CME, corona mass ejections which can badly affect electronic uh, things on Earth. If so it that's the us. solar flares. Uh, solar that? flare, it's similar to solar flare. Solar flare is more of radiation. But when actually a corona mass and a set of ions go out, right. it is corona mass injection. It does not go at the speed of light. It's slightly slower. So which means that you can actually create a warning system eventually right. for it. Right. So that's what we are trying to do. Corona mass ejections we know happened in 1859. The Carrington event, everybody's talking about right. when all the telegraph wires caught fire. So that so that it never happens again, we have to study the corona. This is what it's going to do. Okay. It's made in Bangalore. Okay. Let me move forward. The next equipment you can see on the right hand side of uh, this thing is uh, this is called suit. I'll not get into the terminology of it. Okay. I'll explain what it is. Suit basically will analyze ultraviolet radiation. Okay. Now we on Earth, we are protected because we have ozone layer. Right. But on, on if you go on Mars, for instance, there's no ozone layer which means you could be exposed to ultraviolet radiation. Ultraviolet radiation can be very harmful to living cells, but can also be useful for a variety of purposes. So we need to study that. This equipment called SUIT, which is made from Pune, will be studying the ultraviolet radiations okay. of the sun. Closely, just under SUIT, you see a red button like a thing, right? This one. See, yes, exactly, that red button. And can you see that blue button there? Like, okay. it looks like a square block, right? These two are a set of equipment which will study the X-rays from the sun. This for low energy X-ray. Low energy X-ray is something which you use in your standard X-rays for human body. Right. 
these X-rays are cosmic radiations can immediately destroy and kill cells. We are protected against it. How? Because there's a magnet at the center of the Earth. So the magnet wards off all X-rays. Okay. But it does not happen when you go to outer space. So you need to understand how X-rays operate from the sun. This will also study a lot of things. Again, uh, at the photosphere and the chromosphere, X-rays happen. Right? So that's this one is, the red one was called uh, uh, Solex. This is called Helios. Okay. Right? The two equipments, again, made in India. Right? Let's go on the other side. The other side of Aditya L1, we have this set of instrument called the Aspects. Aspects essentially studies the atmosphere. You mentioned solar winds. Right. Solar winds are studied by this. Okay. The 900 kilometers per hour, 5,000 centigrade solar winds studied here. They determine the temperature and the mood of the sun. And we all know that the sun has a wavering mood. 11 years, it heats up, right. reaches a peak, and then goes to a minima and maximum. That's the solar cycle that you're... Solar talking. cycle. Solar cycle is governed also by the solar winds. And many other factors of the sun are governed by solar winds. And solar winds are very strong on sun. We will study this. This will study the protons in the solar wind uh, and the positively charged ions in the solar wind at high, at low energy and this at high energy. So okay. we have got sort of high energy, low energy combo on X-ray and in aspects as well. Right. Let me come to the front of our uh, unit as well. Of course, you can see the solar panels. I don't need to explain that because you can see solar yeah. panel one, solar panel there, and that's there. Now let's come back to this. This is a strangely named equipment. It's called PAPA, P-A-P-A. But it's not that it's the father of this whole thing, but it is essentially to study plasma, P is for plasma. Okay. So the sun is plasma. Most of the sun, unlike solid liquid gas, there's a fourth state of matter called plasma. Sun is mostly plasma. plasma. And that's what we are studying. This will help us analyze the atmosphere of the sun, the chromosphere. It will also be able to tell us things about the photosphere of the sun and how the sun's plasma behaves and how the electrons move around on the sun, which are very, very important because it's the composition of the sun. Okay. So it will help us study that. Again, this was also made in India in, um, in Trivandrum. Okay. And at the very base of it, let me just, okay, let, let me just pause it here and I'll show you where it is. Okay, right. You see these pipes, these right. things? The, these ones. Yeah, these ones. These are es ex essentially magnetic uh, meters. These are magnetometers. This, you can see, it looks like a pipe, right? Right. It is a pipe. So it will come out six meters. Okay. when it is launched and it's orbiting in the L1 orbit. At that point, it will stretch out six meters and it has uh, magnetic devices which will be able to measure the magnetic field of the sun in the solar system. Sun is tremendously, it has a lot of magnetic energy. That tremendous magnetic forces will be studied by this six meter pipe, which has two sensors at three meters each. Okay. And that is our Aditya L1, completely made in India, a pride of India. Okay, so uh, before we uh, you end this, let's also quickly take our viewers through how does it really impact? Because as far as studying the sun, we've done it from the ground. Uh, of course, India has had one uh, uh, area where they lacked was not having a modern observation facility, which is over a period of time that has changed, largely with regards to data was coming in from the US, Japan, UK. And for the first time, viewers, what is going to happen is that India gets fresh data to really study, if I'm not wrong, uh, Srijan. And that's the reason why this is being considered a unique way of looking at sun, a study of sun. I just want a, a word on that with regards to what other countries have achieved so far in terms of US, UK, Japan, and if I'm uh, missing out any other country. But India is also now getting... a a direct access to the data which they were getting in as a secondary source. How do you really look at it in terms of being the first? Right, absolutely. See, the sun is huge. A little device, whether it's India, NASA, ESA or Japan, right. really studies only a part of the sun at a very small fraction of a time. It's like if you go to Pacific Ocean for one trip to, say, from Asia to uh, North America and you don't see a whale, that doesn't mean there are no whales. Correct. in Pacific Ocean, but there's a likelihood you'll never see one. So you have to do this again and again and again and again, and one day you will find the mysteries of whales. In this case, plasma. In this case, the corona. Why is corona so hot? It's very important. We need to find out more about the sun, primarily because the sun determines our own, uh, uh, our own atmosphere, our own weather, our own climate. Climate change is affected largely by the sun. And so how in terms of weather, I think so that would weather be is very, very important. And weather does affect, especially us, because we are a, a country which is affected by climate change in a big way. Right. Number two, 
the sun, uh, the solar flares, as you mentioned, and also the coronal mass ejections, which are even worse and more dangerous than, uh, than solar flares. And when they come together, in 1859, the Carrington event happened, when the telegraph poles caught fire. And today we live in a world of electronics, of, from the airplane to the mobile phone, everything can be negatively, negatively affected by a CME, which is coronal mass ejection. That is the second part. Also from a national security perspective, you need to have an eye on something which gives you life and at the same time can give you a lot of radiation. That is important, especially right. if, you want, if you're looking at humans landing on Mars or other planets. You need to figure out what will happen, how much is the X-ray, when, in which direction does it appear, when does it appear, what are the signs of it, because today we are protected on Earth, but when we go to Mars or other planets, you have to bear all and these. Just a quick word, Srijan, Astrosat and Aditya L1, the difference that we are really looking at, because that's, that's mostly a satellite that is going to... Well, like a telescope, yeah. Right. So, uh, in terms of what really brings in the change right now, as far as Aditya L1 is concerned, in comparison to the other space agencies too? See, one great thing which we have done is that we have built this indigenously. Right. The other thing which I, I love about Aditya L1 is that it has got everything. So it's got X-ray, it's got plasma, it's got negative ions, it's got positive ions, it has ultraviolet, it has visible light, everything it analyzes, including magnetism. So it is a complete comprehensive 360 degree view of the sun, beyond just what we look at it, but what we feel of it, and what we don't feel of it because we are, we are sitting on Earth. So it's a very 360 degree view, and I think the best thing about why, why the world loves Indian study in space is because we share data. Unlike others, if you go out to Google, you'll not find half of the data what they have got. But right. ISRO is readily giving everything away from Pragyan for anyone to consume yeah. and study. So I think that's why the world is so excited. Well, thank you very much, uh, Srijan, for putting this into perspective, giving us a, a, you know, a 360 degree understanding of what really happens for the next few days and also the 125 day, the journey that's going to uh, take place. What makes Aditya L1 so very unique? That's all that we could have uh, from the studios here in Delhi. Over to you, Priyanka. Well, that's right, uh, Shavan, they're uh, getting us the details with Srijan Pal Singh uh, over the launch of Aditya L1, exiting from uh, the initial orbit to the elliptical orbit to leaving the gravitational sphere of influence and then, of course, the cruise phase as well. Uh, we, of course, viewers, will be continuing to get you all the details and each